so there are three basic levels of store platforms that I found out there, and this is uh, mainly dealing with print on demand sellers, but it could apply to anything really uh, handmade or if you have your own product. What I did is I went to Google and I just typed in uh, how to start an Etsy shop, how to start a Shopify store, how to start a WooCommerce store, and there's the results, the searches per month. So there's basically uh, 9,900 people per month are searching for this, how to start an Etsy shop. Whereas 1,600 people per month are searching for how to start a Shopify store, and a measly 20 per month are, are searching for how to start a WooCommerce store. So when you're like new to the business and you want to start a store, where do you go? Well, you probably go to the most popular one first, and then once you get your feet wet, then you can move on to the other levels, I call them. So in here, um, in my site, I cover them all. But like, honestly, my favorite is the least popular one. So I'm kind of stuck because if I focus on training people on the least popular one, my site isn't going to make it. So sometimes I have to give people what they want before I give them what they need. So it's almost like, okay, um, I'm going to go through this and explain in more detail, but there are advantages and disadvantages to each of these store platforms and you can use them all. Uh, but I, I thought I'd shoot a video because I had this posted in my group coaching program. Um, just going through a couple of things. So here's my rankings. So basically Etsy, and I said I might turn it into a YouTube video. I actually did. I consider Etsy like a beginner platform and it's not an insult. It's just how I'd, I would rank it. There's tons of YouTubers pushing Etsy print on demand and Etsy digital. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. We all know. Uh, how it really works though. Like people in my group coaching program understand how Etsy works. And the main thing, well, I'll go through this. The pros are, I think the reason it's so attractive is it's simple to set up. It's simple to connect to print on demand suppliers too. And the biggest draw that Etsy has is they say that they'll send you traffic from their 93 million buyers on their site. So I'm going to go here for a sec. i just close these other tabs out. Um, I'm going to go to Etsy in an incognito window and I'm going to go to the sellers page and see how, like how they get you in there. So I'm just going to scroll all the way down and you go sell on Etsy right at the bottom. Let's see that uh, reach millions of buyers in Canada and around the world. So this is their draw. This is what they're doing. Reach millions of buyers. That's how they get you in. And it's basically, um, yeah, and again, join the creative marketplace where millions of shoppers spend billions each year purchasing directly from creative entrepreneurs like you. So their their promise up front is to say that um, you're going to get sales because we're going to give them to you because we have all these buyers and they're already browsing our site, which is why I think people are so attractive to them. Uh, they say basically you don't have to do any marketing to succeed. Okay, so that's the draw. That's the pros. It looks good on paper. The cons are this. Sales are painfully, painfully slow to get, like, months or years to get consistent sales. If you go into any Etsy group right now um, on Facebook, uh, you'll see that people are always saying, is this right? Like, I've been working for, like, three months and I have one sale. Or I've been working for six months and I got, like, three sales. And two of them were my family members. And that's the problem with Etsy. The sales are so slow. Like, I don't... I don't understand. I think it's because people aren't buying as much online. They're kind of uh, recovering from the pandemic buying spree that they went on. Um, the second thing, though, is not just that. Well, that is the main con. But the other thing is the fees. The fees are ridiculous. And it ends up costing as much as or more as a place like Shopify, if you do the math. And I do have videos on my channel about that, too. The other con is they can put you in a payment reserve at any time holding your money so you make a sale and they won't give it to you for like 90 days or until you ship the product or whatever it may be that's annoying uh did i mention the fees i, I got two videos on that and then the main thing is this again complete lack of sales after putting in literally hundreds of hours of work is very depressing but they sold you on the dream and then the dream didn't come true and now you're sitting there with a the shop paying all these fees and these automatic fees every time you make a sale and these automatic fees every four months on every listing you put up. Um, the other huge drawback of Etsy is you cannot sell your store to exit it. So if you ever wanted to cash out, uh, and a lot of people do, they'll build up a store and then they'll cash out. You can't do that on Etsy. Um, <clears throat> the other, another con is you're building the Etsy brand, not your own. 
So everything you do is promoting Etsy and all of the other sellers, which some of which are your competition, that's who you're promoting when you put all that effort into it. And there's also very little customization options, which I don't really like personally, but the draw is right there. Like they'll send you traffic and we have 93 million buyers. You're going to get it. Don't worry. Don't worry at all. That's not the case. Now Shopify, let's go onto that platform. I would rank them as intermediate to advanced, basically. Once you've been selling for a while on Etsy, you get disheartened typically because of a severe lack of sales. You're told to just keep listing products every day or, you know, make sure your SEO is right or make or just horrible advice that is just crap. Your next step um, is always to say, okay, I'm tired of Etsy. I'm tired of putting all this time and effort into something and not getting any returns. And that's when you go and you open a store in a place where you control the traffic going to it. And the reason that people don't do this right away is they think, I don't know how to do that. I don't know how to run ads. I don't know how to do free traffic methods. That's too complicated. I'm going to skip it. I'm just going to go to the simple place. Okay. So the pros of Shopify is it is very simple to set up. They have like full tutorials. There's a million videos on it. Super simple to connect to print on demand suppliers. And this is a big pro of Shopify. It's your own store, but they host it for you. That means they handle all the techie backend stuff for you. And it is super popular. Shopify is just gigantically popular. You're building your own brand, not someone else's, which is a huge benefit. And this is huge too. And this is something people don't think about. You can sell your store down the road to exit. And there are a lot of people, there's even marketplaces like, I'll show you one. There's multiple, but uh, Flippa. This place will sell. Uh, you can list your Shopify store and you can sell it. So let's, there, we'll go Shopify. And check this out. These are all stores that are selling right now on Flippa. So you can buy them. You can see their financials and you can go and buy them. This doesn't exist for um, Etsy at all. Okay. Huge benefit. Now you might say, why would I build up a store and then sell it? Well, if you get a store to a certain level and then you're like, you know what, I'm kind of bored and I'd love a huge inflow of cash, like, you know, six or seven figures, I'm just going to list it and see if I can sell it to somebody. There are buyers out there who will do that too, because they want to skip all the hard work you did and just pay money to do it, to get it. It's, it's pretty cool. The cons are this, uh, you're, it is your own store, but you're renting it. You don't own it. It's, it's on their platform. So they actually can still suspend you if they wanted to. If you do something wrong, you can be out. Not as risky as um, Etsy for getting suspended, but uh, I didn't even put that up there. Etsy can suspend you, and they do suspend a lot of stores too. Your monthly rent adds up quick and gets excessive with app fees. So it starts like pretty low, and then you get apps that you add in, and you soon, pretty soon you're looking at a monthly bill of like 100 200 $300 per month. And then some of these apps even want to charge you per month, and they want to charge you a per per sale fee as well, or even a percentage of your revenue. It just, it gets out of control real quick. So it requires a lot of paid apps to run properly. The store itself is like a base store. And then if you want to do some other funky things, like cool things on your store to help it get more sales, you have to go to the app store and you have to install the app on your store. And then you have to pay for that app. Typically the apps have like a free trial, but those fees add up big time. Um, as far as customization goes, there's very little. Uh, and I say that meaning if you wanted to go into the code itself and change things, it's very little that way. You can customize the theme and all that stuff. That's no problem. And there are a ton of themes available for it, which is an advantage, I guess, versus Etsy, where when you open your Etsy store, it looks like everybody else's. But with Shopify, you can make it look like your own. All right, finally, <clears throat> remember this part? <laughs> How to start a WooCommerce store, 20 people per month looking for this. Here's why uh, it's advanced. Okay. At this point, if you're at that level, uh, you most likely have an Etsy shop. That's not getting any sales at all. You've tried Shopify because that's what everybody does after Etsy and you're paying big time monthly fees to them and you don't really like that. So now you seek a better solution. Um, WooCommerce is the answer, but it is a little bit more advanced. So the pros are of WooCommerce are you own it hundred percent. It's yours. It is simple to connect to print on demand suppliers. Uh, you can customize it 100%. It's open source code and you can go right into the code and customize anything you want. There's developers that will um, do little projects for you too. There's tons of themes available. There's lots of plugins available to help you run your store. Some are free, some are paid. 
You're building your own brand, not someone else's. That's key. Same with Shopify. You can sell your stored eggs down the road. That's key. Same with Shopify. And this is one of the biggest features that I like versus Shopify is WooCommerce is built on WordPress. So it's amazing for getting SEO traffic from Google because WordPress is the biggest blogging platform in the world. So what I mean by SEO traffic is somebody goes and looks for like, say, uh, top 10 Valentine stay gifts and they'll get like blog posts from all these magazines and all these online stores and your store could be one of those and then people click it they go to your store they read the article the article is filled with links to your products and that's how you sell it for free it's very cool um now the cons of this are number one it's not very popular i guess number two it's not easy to set up if you're not techie okay if you've never installed uh you're basically getting hosting you are the tech now, so you, you need your own hosting to run it. And that's a huge drawback for a lot of people, even though there are a ton of WooCommerce hosts out there. If I go here, even WooCommerce.com, I'll go there. They actually have their own hosting where they'll get you started for like a buck. And this is right from WooCommerce. I'm trying to find the store here, not my dashboard. Oh, it keeps going to my dashboard. I'm going to log out. Log out. There we go. Platform that grows with you. No matter what success looks for, like for you, you can do it with WooCommerce or WordPress. A WordPress-based e-commerce platform allows helps merchants and developers build successful businesses for long term. Try for free for 14 days and upgrade to any paid plan for only $1 for your first three, three months, which is awesome. That's really good. And this is their their own hosting. So it's right from WooCommerce, which is wicked. WooCommerce, the plugin itself is free, but then you do have to get hosting. So if you go try it for free, I want to see what it does. Oh, they walk you through this thing. Um, I was looking for the pricing after that. Let me see if it's in the bottom. Let's see about pricing. Upload, shipping, mobile. Oh, I can't find it. WooCommerce hosting. There it is. So Woo Express, Pressable. Let them migrate your store. That's pretty cool. VIP. Hosting partners. Bluehost, SiteGround, Nexus, WP Engine. So there's all these hosts that you can get. Let's go to Bluehost, they're pretty popular. See what they have. Like $3.98 a month. That's gonna be a very um, wimpy system, but you could start for that and then you could increase it later. Over 2 million websites with WordPress. Anyway, that's a little sidetrack, but hosting is an issue because people don't wanna host it. Especially if you're new to e-commerce or new to print on demand or new to that world. The last thing you wanna do is try and figure out, man, I gotta buy a domain now. And then I got to find a host and then I got to connect everything. And then I got to upload WordPress and then I got to install WooCommerce. And I, I like, man, a lot of people just look at that and they go, no. And that's why this number, uh, how to start an e-commerce, a WooCommerce store is only 20 people per month because it is advanced. There, there's no two ways about it. Um, it also requires you to handle all the updates of the software on the back end. So within the WooCommerce dashboard, which is the WordPress dashboard, there's always updates to the plugins and the extensions and and WordPress itself. So you got to stay on top of that. And it's literally, it's not hard. It's just clicking the update button, but it seems um, very daunting to get up and running. And that is why a lot of people steer clear of it. And they go, people will always take the path of least resistance. And in the print on demand world, that path of least, re least resistance is Etsy. And then the path of a little bit of resistance is Shopify. And then the most resistance is WooCommerce. But which route is best? It really depends. It depends on you. What's your experience level? That's where I would start. So if you're not sure which place to start or end, so I, I just posted this, but I want people to let me know because I want to cover, um, well, I'm covering all of these platforms because I know that the bulk of people want uh, info on you know, how to start an Etsy shop. And a lot of those people, are, they want to sell print-on-demand products. A lot of them want to sell handmade too, but um, it's more than Shopify and it's more than WooCommerce. 
So as far as the three levels, there you go. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Um, what do you think of the three levels? Which one are you on? Let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear from you.